So now we're going to look at a few examples of assembly language instructions, complete assembly language instructions. This is what the this is what you as a human will write when you write an assembly language code, and this is what the computer will actually see, which is the specification to each piece of hardware of what to do. And so part of the role of learning this material is learning how to get from here to here and back again. And so one of the kind of questions I can ask you on assignments is, here's an instruction, what are the 32 bits that it corresponds to? Or here's a 32 bit binary number, what instruction does it correspond to? That's the kind of thing you're going to be doing. We talked about this a little bit already, but why do you learn assembly language? And, and I've, I've talked about this a little bit already, but in general, the idea is you want to have some historical context where the stuff comes from, right? Um, the, the Apollo astronauts had to actually program their computers in assembly language in real time. They didn't have voice recognition. They didn't even really have, you know, a full keyboard. They would actually have to say opcode operand. They actually called it noun verb uh, or verb noun uh, operation. So you'd have to tell the computer what to do and what to do it on for everything you wanted the computer to do. Nowadays, of course, we write in high level languages and you can write better high level language code if you understand the actual machine code that gets created based on that high level code. And again, there are some circumstances where you actually code in assembly the language. These are smaller, fewer these days and far between, but you get really, really fast, really space efficient code and you get direct control over everything the computer does, which frankly is incredibly dangerous, which is why a lot of viruses are written in assembly language, but that's for another course. So here are some examples of what MIPS instructions look like. Uh, we have a number of different formats, which we'll talk about. In fact, there are three formats, but we'll get to those later. Our format is the uh, kind of instruction that we use for most of our arithmetic. Uh, we have an opcode, which specifies what the machine is going to do. We have three registers. We have another field called SH, which we'll talk about later on. And then we have another field called function. In this case, what this instruction does is the first six bits tell us what kind of operation we use. If those six bits in MIPS are all zero, then we go and look at the function code, which tells us what specific ALU operation we're doing. All zeros means we're doing an ALU instruction of some kind. And then the function code tells us which ALU operation we're gonna use. And so these six bits get routed directly to the ALU to tell it to add or subtract or whatever. These 15 bits, get routed directly to the register file to tell the register file which instructions you're looking at, and then the whole instruction gets executed. So that's an example of one of the kind of instructions that we're going to see. R format instructions are some of the more common instructions, and they are used primarily for ALU operations. They're called R format because all of the information is stored in the registers. So and you might think, where else could you store information? But you'll see, there's lots of other places. But all of the information is stored in registers. Both sources and the destination are all in registers. You load information from two registers in the register file. You do something to it, and you put the result back in the register file. We have six bits of opcode and six bits of function code, so 12 bits altogether to tell the computer what we're doing, 15 bits altogether to tell the computer what Oper, what op codes, oh, sorry, what operands we're using uh, to actually do that math. And again, there's another, uh, another field in there that you'll see in a little later on. Here's how this works on an actual uh, data path. So what we have is we have the full data path here, and we're going to get um, this operation executed. We're going to add from S2 and S1 and put the result into T8. First, the program counter addresses the instruction cache. The instruction cache loads that instruction and then breaks it into pieces and puts those pieces as uh, control information to the register file, telling it which two source registers to load and what eventual destination register to use. Then the register file looks up those values and presents the data, the contents of those registers to the ALU. We've got another multiplexer here that we're routing through a couple of them, but we'll look at those later on. Then the ALU takes the result 
And again, using routing information for this multiplexer, passes that information back into the register file to store it in T8. And that's the complete operation of that instruction. So if we listed a whole bunch of instructions to add a whole bunch of numbers together, this is what they would do. Instruction by instruction, they'd load new information from the register file, present it to the ALU, and put the result back into a new, um, new place in the register file. And so we can add things over and over again, or do any other ALU operation with this same kind of hardware. And we have control logic that specifies which um, operations each individual machine, each individual box is going to is going to have. So we have these multiplexers, which again we'll talk about in some detail later on. Uh, we have to have control logic, which will route through these multiplexers to get the information to the right place. Uh, and then we have uh, control logic that tells the ALU what to do, tells the register file what to do, tells the uh, data memory what to do, and tells the next address logic what to do. And again, we'll look at all of those different details later on, but I wanted to show you an example of the actual mechanical operation of an instruction from the, oper from the act of loading that instruction from the instruction cache, what those 32 bits are in that instruction, and how those 32 bits are used to specify operations of the individual pieces, individual components of this data path, which again, as a reminder, we know how to build each of these things. The new part is putting them together into a general purpose computer that will execute the MIPS instruction set.